welcome to Community Connections with Children's Services Council. I am your host, Sean Boyle, and with me is... Ashley Mock. The not feeling so well, but still in the studio, Ashley Mock. <laughs> still here. Um, welcome to the one-hour commercial-free radio program that's all about connecting you, the listener, to what resources, family fun activities, that's really the theme for today's <laughs> yeah. show, um, and resources available to all children and families in St. Lucie County. If you've never heard this show before, you're in for a treat. We have, we have giveaways today. We do. Good stuff. We have baseball tickets to give away today. Um, but if you're a longtime listener, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for being patient. If you've been with us throughout the many years that we've done this show, we think we're getting incrementally better, and I emphasize the word incrementally. Um, but if you've never listened to the show or if you're wondering what the Children's Services Council is or does, um, the Children's Services Council has five priorities for St. Lucie County. Our first priority is making sure every baby is a healthy baby. Our second priority is stopping child abuse before it happens. Our third priority is keeping kids off the streets. Our fourth priority is keeping kids in school. And our fifth priority is keeping kids off drugs and alcohol. And we do that through a network of funded programs. We currently fund 53 programs that last year reached 34,444 <laughs> children. I can't believe I almost forgot that number. I say that number in my sleep. <laughs> 30, 34,444 children. And this network of programs that we fund and provide in the community are programs you're very familiar with. It's the Boys and Girls Club. It's the Avenue D Boys and Girls Choir. It's the Castle. It's Children's Home Society. It's Future Generations, Frontline. All said and done, 53 programs. Now, how can people learn about those programs? There are actually a couple ways where you can get information about those programs. And the best way is through our family guide. Um, we have about 20, maybe even 30,000 now of these out in the community. Um, this new modified version is a really quick description of each one of those 53 programs as well as contact information so that if there's a service that you need or a neighbor needs or a congregation member needs, um, you can quickly find the information and the contact for that program so that you can call them. Um, we also have all of the programs listed on our website, which is CSC slc.org um, and we have a very large Facebook presence where we share a lot of information about our funded programs, events that are coming up which we're going to talk about a couple of those today um, and all kinds of stuff that we share on Facebook. So definitely if you are not already a fan of ours on Facebook, find our page and like it. We share good stuff there. Now for our listeners, you may or may not know this but our show is televised. Correct. And I don't know if you noticed, but I perfectly timed the display of that directory for the television camera, the full length of what you were just talking about. You're I felt like Vanna White there for a second. <laughs> I thought that was very good. Um, real quick, I, I talked about what we do at the Children's Services Council, but we have a lot of people ask, you know, are there Children's Services Councils in all the counties, you know, because we're specific to St. Lucie County? Are they in other states, and how did you get started? So I'm going to take a real quick second to explain that. Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County um, was formed in 1990. The um, state statute allows a community to establish an independent special district for children. And in the whole state of Florida, there's only eight Children's Services Councils. That's eight communities, eight counties that went to the voters and said, do you want to make children a priority? So in 1990... St. Lucie County voted to establish a Children's Services Council. There's only eight in Florida, like I mentioned, and there's only eight in the whole nation. Right. We're very unique as far as making children a priority in our community. I bring all this up because we won in 1990. Obviously, that's why we're here. In November 4th, 2014, we are back on the ballot for reauthorization. Um, the Children's Services Councils across the state have to go back kind of as an accountability check, if you will. Um, back on the ballot, um, Martins County, St. Lucie County, Okeechobee County, and Palm Beach and Broward Counties will be on the ballot. But we, you know, we love all them, but we're <laughs> mostly here talking about St. Lucie County. Not mostly. We are only talking about St. Lucie County. Um, so on November 4th, um, Children's Services Council on s of St. Lucie County will be on the ballot, and there will be a question to reauthorize the Children's Services Council, a yes or no. A reauthorization means that majority of the 53 programs or the 53 programs that we mentioned the programs such as the boys and girls club avenue d all those will continue the funding will continue to be provided if the vote is a no the funding to those programs will no longer continue to exist um and you know when we fund a program we fund we did a little uh, uh survey um of the 53 programs i believe 42 uh, we fund 50 percent or more of their operations so without that funding many of those programs will either not be able to continue and or be limited in the number of children that we serve. So again, on November 4th, 2014, when we go to vote for the governor and 
all that stuff. At the very end of the ballot, there will be a question to reauthorize the Children's Services Council, and this community will have an opportunity to weigh in either yes or no. So that's my brief history. <laughs> it's my history lesson for the day. Um, there will be a quiz later. No, just kidding. Um, so we mentioned we have baseball tickets. Um, we do station breaks every 15 minutes, um, at which point we thank the radio station and the television, and we try to get all the stations right. Um, and you're going to do the TV stations. Apparently, yes. I am. Um, but uh, um, and every 15 minutes, we'll open the phone lines up to give away the baseball tickets. We have four packs of four. I said that right. Four packs of four, right? <laughs> for the Saturday, April 12th baseball game starting at 6.30. It's um, the St. Lucie Mets versus the Fort Myers Miracle. Not miracles, the miracle. <laughs> the single miracle of Fort Myers. St. Lucie Mets <laughs> versus the Fort Myers Miracle. On Saturday, April 12th, 6.30 p.m., we're going to give away those tickets free, so stay tuned. And when we give out the phone number, by all means, call in. Now, we have a jam-packed show. We do. Normally, we dialogue a little bit more, and I tease you, you tease me. But we have <laughs> we're going to skip that we have, we have guests that have an important event coming up, and we need to talk to them. So do you want to uh Sure, sure. We've got um, Alice Kenyon with us today from the Fort St. Lucie Police Department, as well as Denise Sermons from Kids at Hope, who's so excited to be here. Um, but they are going to share with us some information about an event that is actually taking place next week during spring break. Um, I'm sure everyone that is excited about that. I know all the kids are excited about that. Um, but Alice, if you want to just explain a little bit about what the event is and how people can get more information, we'll just turn it over to you. But I am going to move this closer to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's basically an information form. We try to get information out to families so that um, you know they can have their conversations at home or, or make decisions or, or uh, you know whatever they need to do. So this family forum is on Wednesday of spring break, uh, the 26th, and it starts at 1 o'clock in City Hall. It runs from 1 to 3, and uh, we're going to have several speakers talking with families about, um, you know, how to talk to kids about their future. You know, where are they going? Um, are they interested in, uh, you know, military, which takes you, you know, around the world or at least around, uh, you know, the, the coasts of, of our country? Um, they can talk about colleges. We have somebody, uh, Ms. Lila White, coming from uh, Indian River State College to talk about all the um, offerings that, well, the courses that they have there. I mean, I think that is really a fabulous college because it has the academic subjects for, for those so inclined, but it also has a lot of vocational studies and, um, you know, the things for kids to think about, you know, from the uh, public service academies to medicine to dental work to um, vocational, you know, mechanics and, and all that kind of stuff. It really, really has a lot of... Um, things to offer. And then uh, we have one of our officers who's going to talk about Police Athletic League. It really should be Police Activities League because mm -hmm. it is more than athletics. Um, and the Police Explorer post. And, uh, you know, what kind of training is, is, is involved in that? Because we want kids to have um, you know, as much training and information and to be able to dialogue with their families and with their friends and with whomever, you know, about what uh, they're thinking about now and, and where are they going. So that's what that's about. So it sounds like for spring break, which is perfect timing because, you know, families are looking for something to keep their kids busy. Right. You're having a family forum, so the whole family is obviously welcome. And it's really, it seems like it's about their future. Yes, and it's designed for, um, you know, kids anywhere from, you know, 9, 10 years old up to 16, maybe even 17, although my hope would be that 17-year-olders would be, you know, well into that conversation <laughs> of where they're going. But, um yeah, it's open to the public. You know, we uh, want anybody who's interested in the topic to come. And I, I'm going to reiterate: it's next week, March 26th, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And and do tell, how much does this cost? It is free. Not only is it free, but there will be refreshments. So if you feed them, they will come, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's We're the hoping theory. That. And the auditorium seats 200. So. You know, come bring your friends, bring your family, bring your aunt and uncle. <laughs> so, you know, we, we talk on the show all the time about things to do for families and how, you know, people say, oh, there's nothing to do for families. And we're always like, well, you don't clearly don't listen to the radio show because we always talk about that there's things to do. But this is a thing to do that's free in our community. 
and it's over an important time, spring break, kids, you know, they get bored easily. Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they get bored easily. So uh, March 26th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., free food, but more importantly, it's kind of getting the kids to think about their future. And we talk about that a lot about, you know, how do you get kids to, you know, um, you know, do well in school and be successful. You get them to identify a goal or what they want to do and be, and you show them the pathway to that. And this is really kind of what this is all about, right? Yes. So can you, Denise, representing Kids at Hope and <laughs> knowing that you didn't want to be on the microphone, <laughs> but we're going to make you be on the microphone, tell us about, you know, what Kids at Hope role is, role is in this and how important it is for kids to articulate their future. Um, kids at Hope role is just that we want kids and families to start thinking about um, their future, um, to really, parents to really start having this conversation with their kids at a young age. What are you going to do in the future? And um, find out some things that your kids may want to do, um, rather it be military or go to college or even a trade school. So we want them to start actually um, preparing their kids for their future at a uh, young age. That's awesome. So uh, um, how many kids, you, you said it, it can hold 200 yes. plus? Yes. So we want 200 plus there, right? We want 200 kids there. We want 200 families there to, so they can start um, just asking questions about their kids' future because we find that people don't really ask kids what is it that you would like to do in the future or, or prepare them for it. Right. So. Um, you know, we want 17-year-olds if they're not prepared for the future, so they can have an opportunity to talk some of, to some of these agencies about what they can do. That's awesome. And and if our viewers, if you're noticing something that's happening, I, I mentioned that Ashley right before on air wasn't feeling good, and she was being here anyway. Well, she's really not feeling good, so she stepped out. But Wendy, our the intern. Hi, how are you? She has a last name, but I like to call her Wendy the intern. <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's going to fill in on the spot. Thank you. Ashley, so thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, so I, I'm going to reiterate this again. Wednesday, no, yeah, Wednesday of spring break. And if you don't know, parents and grandparents, that spring break is next week. <laughs> it's next week. <laughs> Find something to do. But March 26th at uh, the city of Port St. Lucie's, the city hall, building in, uh, in in the big conference room, right? The in the ch council chambers. The council yes. chamber. It's a big auditorium. Yes. You can't miss it. Um, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., refreshments, a lot of uh, college college information, kids at Hope, uh, military, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, the Port St. Lucie Explorers, the Police Activities League. Got that? I like that. <laughs> Police Act, the PAL, as everybody knows. Um, a lot of things for kids to do. And you're going to be giving away baseball tickets, right? Yes, we're going to give out baseball tickets to the first 50 families that show up. Nice. So that's incentive to get there and get there early. Yes. So uh, we encourage everybody to come out. Now, if somebody's listening and maybe they just caught the tail end of it, is there a way that, is there a website or a phone number that they can call? I'll give that to Ellie. Okay, yes, they can, if they have questions or, or they want to reserve their seat, uh, they can call me, Alice Kenyon, at the police department. My number is 772-344-4087, or the um, uh, uh, police has a website, www.pslpd, for police department, pslpd.us. Um, or they want, if they want to email me directly with a question or a comment or an RSVP, um, uh, it is uh, my first initial A, my last name Kenyon, K E N Y O N, at cityofpsl.com. That's awesome. Very so, good. Do, you, do you encourage people to register first? It is a good idea to let me know how many folks are coming because I'm going to go shopping for food. <laughs> We're going to have, um, you know, little sandwich slices and cookies and uh, water or something to drink. So um, if I'm going to have 200 people, I don't want to just shop for 60 people. <laughs> right, 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 right. Th that would be that'd be terrible, right? I can imagine that. We don't want to have to yeah, right, we, right. we want to have our audience have, be able to have during the break. It's a two-hour thing, so we'll have a break about ha uh, uh, you know, halfway in, you know, let's say 1 o'clock. And uh, we want people to be, get up and stretch, have their uh, seventh inning stretch, right, right. and uh, get a cookie and a sandwich and enjoy themselves. So, again, everybody, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, even, you know, neighbors, tell, tell the families that you know that Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, or next Wednesday, I'm sorry, March 26th, which is spring break, 
which means kids aren't going to be in school. So 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at the city of Port St. Lucie City Hall, um, a, a family fun day, if you will, a family forum to talk about your child's future, the options that are here both locally as well as, you know, abroad, if you will, um, but also to get them to start thinking about and articulating their future because really – you know, to make it a difference, and you and you mentioned it right at the beginning. You know, you can have seventeen-year-olds that come, but you really start as young as nine years old. So you need to start thinking about their future, and even if it's not what they end up being, at least they know that there's a goal in mind and what they have to do to accomplish it. Sean, can I say something real quick? Absolutely. I want to give kudos to the Port St. Lucie Police Department for really being proactive with kids instead of being reactive with them. Um, they have really um, stepped forward to do positive things with them. We always complain about the police departments and how they don't do things for kids. So I just want to give them kudos for actually um, putting this together and other things that they're doing um, just to really show that they're treasure hunters for kids in our community. So. Um, Thank you so much, Alice, Thank for you. all that you all do. Um, and we want to actually come out and support them when they're doing positive things for our youth. Right, and that's a good point. And, yeah. you know, the Port St. Lucie Police Department has always been so active. And, you know, Alice, you run a whole department there that's well, basically... a unit. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, well, <laughs> but that's basically all about getting kids involved and, and right. making a difference. Right, well, I run the Restorative Justice Initiative, which is a pre-arrest diversion, and um, it helps kids who have broken the law, who, you know, then, then they would be the defendant, but it also helps the kids who come and volunteer with us as jurors for jury duty, um, and they can work their way up to um, attorneys and so forth. So, you know, that's part of helping kids to look, you know, they might think, oh, yeah, I want to be an attorney, and then they get in there, and they, you know, see something else. Maybe I'd rather be clerk of court, because maybe, you know, uh, um, arguing a case standing on my feet, you know, is, is a difficult thing. So even when kids learn, you know, wow, what I thought I wanted to be, you know, since I was born, you know, now I find out more about it. So now I find out maybe I don't want to do that. Even that information is good for a kid and for their family. Right. And then they get time to, to switch gears. You know, let's not graduate high school, graduate college, whatever, thinking, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And you get in there and, oh, I can't do this. Right, right. right. That's awesome. So, Again, families, if you if you not really, you know, this is the first time you've heard about it, you know, Alice's program and or, you know, this is the, you know, you're trying to figure out what you're going to do with your kids on spring break. I'm going to say it one more time because, you know, repetition, repetition, repetition. <laughs> Wednesday, March 26th from 1 p.m. to 3, 3 p.m. at the city of Port St. Lucie City Hall, a family, I'm gonna, family forum where they're going to talk about the future, the future of your child, the future career goals, future ways to explore what they want to do, um, places, recreation through the Police Activities League. I, I'm going to start saying that now. I really like that. <laughs> police Activities League. They're going to talk about kids of hope, but more importantly, they're going to get you and your child engaged in something positive, positive that results in your child's future, and they have free food. <laughs> right? Nice. And, and baseball right. tickets. And baseball, and baseball tickets. tickets. Oh, yeah. So right. mark your calendar, March 26, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., Port St. Lucie City Hall. Um, call to reserve your seat. Um, so that Alice knows how much food to get <laughs> at 344-4087. I don't have my glasses, so I'm double checking. 344-4087. Um, make a point of it and, and reserve your spot today. We want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. And you'll have to come back or at least let us know how it went, oh and we God. can report back. Okay, very good. Right, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to transition. You want to go see if our next guest is out there? We're gonna uh, we're gonna Ooh, take a minute to another one, Denise. We're gonna <laughs> <laughs> and that's live on there. Yes, you did survive. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna transition. <laughs> we're gonna transition, but before we do that, that's okay. I feel like that every ten minutes. Like we're still doing it. We're still surviving. Uh, we're, before we transition, we promised that we were gonna give away baseball tickets at every station ID. So let me pause for station ID. When, want to remind everybody you're listening to <laughs> Children's Services Council's Community Connections on 1400 AM WIRA, or you're watching us on the St. Lucie County School Board Channel, WLX TV, Channel 13. This is your Comcast, Comcast <laughs> subscriber. <laughs> channel 13 in Fort Pierce, Channel 19 in Port St. Lucie, Channel 19 on Hometown Cable, Channel 99 on ATTUverse, or Channel 45 on 
light stream cable. Light stream. What did I say? 45. You really Channel need 65 today. on light stream. If you're watching us, thank you. That's what I'm really trying to say. <laughs> and we mentioned before we have baseball tickets. Um, we have um, four four packs we're going to give away um, to the first caller. If you're interested, free baseball tickets to Saturday, April 12th, the St. Lucie Mets versus the Fort Pierce. Or I'm sorry, Fort Myers Miracle. 6:30 p.m. Free tickets. You know, I just lost my host in the middle of the show. You guys, can, you get, everybody's <laughs> laughing at me in the studio. I'm doing my best here. She but obviously runs the show. Clearly, <laughs> she's, the, she's the rock for the show. But if you're interested in tickets, the number is 464-1400. Again, 464-1400. First caller gets a four-pack of tickets to the game. So we had guests patiently waiting. We do. You went and retrieved them. I did. And they were still there. That's <laughs> they, a good, that's yes, a good they sign. they didn't run. They hadn't given up yet. <laughs> um, do you want to introduce them? I would like to. Today we have from... Um, not so easy, Jen is Jen Zobie <laughs> from Early, uh, Early Learning Coalition and Tony... I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. Luke. Luke. Welcome. Thank you. Um, we're going we're gonna to rock, paper, scissors who gets to speak first. But you guys... We, we mentioned, we kicked off the show to say this was all about um, events, family events that were coming up. And you guys have a big event coming up. So yes. uh, I want to talk about what the Early Learning Coalition is and does, but I want to kick off first with the event because I want everybody, all of our listeners and viewers, to get their pencils out. They already know next week, March 26th from 1 to 3 p.m., they're attending the Family Forum for the Fort, Pier or Fort St. Lucie at the City Hall in Port St. Lucie. But we want everybody to save the date for April 5th. So who... <laughs> among the two of you is going to speak first about what the Family Fun Day is all about. I, I'll go ahead and do that because she's got the meat of it and she's <laughs> going to talk more about the Family Fun Fair. So, um, <laughs> But it is our eighth annual Family Fun Fair for the Early Learning Coalition. And um, we bring together a bunch of nonprofits, uh, have a lot of different events or games and, and activities throughout the day. Um, Saturday, April 5th, at John B. Park and Lawnwood Stadium in Fort Pierce, just off of Virginia Avenue, and um, that's about all I know. So I'll let Jen, <laughs> I'll let Jen talk about the meat of it. All right, there's no laughing great, at me great. when I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the meat of what's happening on April 5th. Okay, so um, see, I don't like the microphone. That's what happens. That's so we be a have problem. a we have a <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of activities. Um, Again, it's our eighth annual, so a lot of these people have come back year after year, and it's really great. We have a bike rodeo with the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Department. Um, I-9 Sports will be coming again with sports clinics. There's going to be golf and um, flag football and soccer and t-ball, I think. Um, Curious George is coming. Nice. And Curious George will have a, some kind of a tossing game or something, so you can now play with Curious George instead of just chase him everywhere. <laughs> Um, the Starbright Therapy Dogs are coming, so that's where the um, owners bring their dogs, and the children can come and they can read with the dogs, and there will be a book there also. Um, we have all kinds of games, crafts. Um, there's a Steps for Kids walk going on, so people can come and do some laps, and we're going to send the count to Tallahassee. Um, there's going to be entertainment. We're going to have a dance company, um, I Shine Dance Company, up on the stage, as well as a bubble show, which that will be new, so... We're very excited about that one. Um, everyone that comes in is going to get a book from Barnes & Noble. Nice. nice. They donated books for us. So, well, not everyone. How many do we have? <laughs> well, we have 500. So. Yeah, 500. <laughs> 500 people will get a book. Um, what else? There's going to be raffles. And I don't know. What else? The Bounce houses. Yep. Oh, oh, and the time is 11 to 2. And this is, you said, the 8th annual? Yep. So you, annual. And I've been to a, a few times. You bring in a lot of people to this event. We do. We had about 600 last year. Wow. wow. And yeah. and tell everybody how much it costs. It's free. That's <laughs> the word of the day. It <laughs> is the word. It's free. the word of the show. That's really what our show is all <laughs> about, free. about free things to do. <laughs> um, so it's free. It's so free. So just for coming for free, mm -hmm. uh, and families can bring children of all ages, yes. correct? Yes, children of all ages. Bounce houses. Mm -hmm. Curious George, that's always my favorite. I have my picture taken with Curious George every time I can. <laughs> every time he's there, I push the kids away and say, "Let me." No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Curious George, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yes. <laughs> we have about. I am joking. We have 13 <laughs> sheriffs. Uh, <laughs> uh, a bike rodeo. Yes. 
Yes. Um, I nine sports. So if I remember right, I know there was people throwing footballs and mm -hmm. and some golf swinging. I saw, <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of vendors there. Yes. A lot of people who provide resources in the community are there to talk about to let families know what's available. Right. As well as a lot of our child care providers are going to be there. And just for coming, as as quantities last, a free book for the children. Yes. So really, and a free raffle ticket. And a free raffle ticket. Yes. And what are some of the raffle prizes? Um, there's just different kinds of baskets that are out there right now. Um, gift baskets. I don't even know all of them because some people just say we're going to donate something. Games. But Last year we've had, like. Um, we actually had a sponsorship to uh, an I nine sport, so the registration yes. fee uh, was right from last Sometimes, year. Sometimes um, a free week of, of summer camp at one of the childcare providers. They'll oh, have nice. for the that raffle. Is nice. Um, I can't even think. See, you have me, you have me thinking. That's what happens when we put a mic and a camera in front. <laughs> Everything kind of gets a little fuzzy. Um, I think there were children's mats, like nap time mats, and things that were part of the raffle mm -hmm. and, and different types of activities. So bowling eight, movies. That, you always find that kind of stuff. The what? I'm bowling sorry. and movies. I thought you said bowling movies. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> what bowling movies? <laughs> I can think of one. No, um, not that not one. Not appropriate no, for children. No, no. Um, so, um, <laughs> so April fifth, yes. uh, from eleven a.m. to twelve p.m. at Lawnwood Stadium at eleven a.m. Eleven, 11, 11 to two. two. What did I say? To twelve. 12. All right. I, that would be very short. I really don't have my glasses, <laughs> and I saw car. two, and I thought maybe it's eleven a.m. to two p.m. It's longer than an hour. It's eleven a.m. to two p.m. <laughs> three hours, and that's John B. Park. Oh, you, oh, okay. John P. Park, uh, off of Virginia Avenue in Fort Pierce, and you can contact Jennifer Mead at 595-6424, extension 118, for more information. Now, do you ask people to pre-register no. or just show up? just come. So, and, and obviously, if you're giving away something free, um, they probably, you know, to ensure they get a book, it'd probably be good to show up at 11. Would that be safe to say? If you want to get a, one of the first 500 books, yes, <laughs> be there early. We usually have a line to come in, so. Oh, wow. Well, that's so, good. Yes. So, again, folks, we talk about it all the time, you know, we hear it, you know, oh, there's nothing to do for families. That's wrong. I mean, it's, it's, that's all I can say. It's wrong. There's always usually something going on. Um, Saturday, April 5th, mark it. If you're a grandparent, make sure you take your grandkids. If you're a parent, put that date on your calendar. If you're a coworker, congregation member, share this information so that people know that there are resources available and things to do. And not only is this a great event to find out, you know, to, to bounce houses and and I'm, there's food vendors there too, right? There I mean, is going to be a concession Concession. Stand. That's the only thing you have to pay for. Yeah, I know that because I took my son. To, we have a table there. Yes. I took my son to work the table, and, you know, like 30 minutes into it, he's like, can I get some food somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> and it was pretty good. Um, 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 there's uh, things to do for the kids. There's, you know, it's you guys kind of outlined the whole track there, right? Same, same yes. setup. So as you kind of walk around, the kids have things to do at almost every station. But there's also resources for the parents and people right. that the parents can talk to to find out, you know, if they need child care or if they're looking for an after school program or whatever it may be. It's really geared towards parents and the children. Correct. And we want everybody to show up. We do. We want to break records. Right. right. So what was what's the goal? 600 last year? 600 was last so year. We so we want, at we least want more than that. We want sure. 700. There you go. Yes. I was thinking 750. All right, oh, seven. Okay. I like it. <laughs> Set the goal high. Let's let's keep going. Let's auction it off. Let's get to a thousand. <laughs> but uh, um, so besides this radio show, which I'm sure a lot of people are, are listening and watching, um, how else can they learn about this? Call your office clearly. But I mean, will you be handing out flyers? Yeah, there will be posters at there'll be posters at uh, the child care centers. Awesome. Uh, and around town, wherever we can get those up, along with um, um, we're not on Facebook yet, but and, and we may not be in time. <laughs> but we're going to encourage our employees to you know put some information out there, and and if Children's we'll Services Council we'll could do that for us as well, we'll so. absolutely do that. So the word is getting out through child care so, so, uh, centers, uh, social media, this show, but. We really, you know, we talk on the show, not a passive show for our listeners, an active show. So even if you're like sitting at home going, you know, my kids are now 30, 40 years old and their kids are a little grown, I'm not going to go. But I guarantee you, you have a neighbor, a coworker, congregation member who has kids that can take advantage of this. And let's eliminate this talk of there's nothing to do for families in St. Lucie County because it's not true. So April 5th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
<laughs> at Lawnwood Stadium, and it's free to come. And it's it's vendor food vendors, resources, things to do for the kids, free books for the first 500 uh, children that come through, um, and it's all for you residents of St. Lucie County. So mark it on your calendar, April 5th. Yes. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause real quick for station ID, and then we're going to come back and talk to you about the Early Learning Coalition and what you do for the community. Okay. Uh, remind everybody you're listening to Community Connections with Children's Services Council on 1400 AM WIRA, or you're watching us on our great partner with the St. Louis County School Board, WLX, Comcast Channel 13 and Fort Pierce Channel 19 in Port St. Lucie, Channel 99 on ATTU Verse, Channel 65 on Lightstream Cable, and Channel 19 on Hometown Cable. Yay. I'm getting the head nod. Did I get you it all right? It all right. Yes, Sharon, did. our producer, cameraman, says, good job, Sean. You didn't screw it up. That's so right. <laughs> we still have baseball tickets. I know I'm talking a mile a minute. we got a lot to cover, but we, we stop everything for phone calls. We do. So the first call at 464 one four zero zero again four six four one four zero zero um you can have free baseball tickets to the mets game on saturday april 12 six thirty p.m um a pack of four um we actually have a bunch of tickets here so if you need more than that we can accommodate that as well but all it starts with is a simple phone call at four six four one four zero zero and for our viewers if you're watching and clearly it's not broadcast live if you go to our facebook page um, go to Facebook, look up Children's Services Council, St. Lucie County. Leave a message on our Facebook wall that you heard the show and you like baseball tickets. We'll get back to you and connect you with that. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, so we talked about your family fun fair. I'm going to plug it again. April 5th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Longwood Stadium. Yeah. Everybody come out. Um, <laughs> I got the time right. Everybody come out. It's a great time. Um, but the Early Learning Coalition, can you talk about what you do for the community and why it's so important? Yes, definitely. Well, first of all, we're funded uh, through state and federal dollars. We have uh, two main programs. Our first is the school readiness program where we subsidize child care for working families that can't afford. Uh, I know myself, when my kids were younger, we were paying twice as much uh, for child care than our mortgage cost us. So it is very expensive. Um, Parents have to have a purpose for care, so that means that they have to be working at least 20 hours a week uh, and or going to school. So, so there, there is some minimum qualifications that way, and of course income uh, as well, based on their family size. And then we will subsidize that care for them on a weekly basis. So, And um, parents may also qualify if you're unsure of whether or not you would qualify or not, call us because we can determine that initially for you over the phone. You may qualify for part-time care as, a, as opposed to full-time care. Um, and you can call us at the 595-6424 um, or 595-6363 is our resource and referral number as well. Um, so that's school readiness. And then we also have VPK, or Voluntary Pre-Kindergarten, for all four-year-olds. That is a free program, no matter what the income level of the family is. Uh, and children have to be four on, um, turn four on or before September 1st of this coming year to uh, get into a program next year. Now, if you currently have a four-year-old um, that has not attended a VPK program at all this year, it's probably too late to get into a school year program, but there are providers that do have summer programs out there. So uh, just give us a call again at 595-6424 and we'll be able to uh, help you through that process. Um, so those are the two main funded programs. We also offer child care resource and referral. They, um, if, if you're a parent and you're new to the community or maybe you have a new child, uh, first child, and you're unfamiliar what you should do or what you should look for with a child care center, give us a call. We can customize a list for you to say, you tell us, hey, I live um, off of Easy Street um, in Indian River Estates, and I work down in Port St. Lucie on US-1. Can you tell me what child care centers are close to my home or close to work? we can customize that for you to help you narrow down um, you know, the centers That's that you're awesome. looking for. So, um, And then we also 
help people that are providers or want to open up a new child care center. Uh, maybe they're not sure what they need to do, but they have an interest in that. We, we will go ahead and help them through that process, give them information to get them started um, as well. So, and then, of course, around VPK, um, you know, any questions there. And we do also offer a father-child connection program um, that is free uh, for all fathers. Um, there are different law forums and seminars, and there's actually a program, uh, a, a 12 to 14 week program that the fathers can go through as well. And it, it, uh, to sum it up in a few words, it helps fathers be better dads. Right. You know, I did. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, last week to be on Anthony Ch Chambers' Pay It Forward network on simulcast on WIRA and WFLM at 7 p.m. Um, and we were talking about, you know, what's going on in the community and resources. And he brought up, I think recently, he'd either met Eric Siebenek, who runs the father-child program, yep. or he was a guest. And we talked about how important it is for fathers to be engaged in their child's life. Um, and, we, you know, we were kind of joking around, you know, as, as young men growing up, you know, a lot of fathers don't, or a lot of young boys and men don't dream about being fathers. They dream about, we're joking around, like, you know, being point guard for the Lakers or whatever. <laughs> um, but so a lot of times it doesn't come naturally, you know, and, you know, the scariest moment in a father's life is probably when that child is first left alone with them. You know, the mother's <laughs> like, you you can take care of this child now. I'm, I'm going to step out for 15 minutes or a half hour. Um, but Eric really basically gives fathers the skills and the confidence to be a great father or dad mm -hmm. um, and that's so important in this community because you know we need more adult male role models and when I hear the word adult male role model to me that's a father or a dad so yeah. uh, kudos to the early learning coalition for having the father child program and the impact that it's having I want to talk uh, I wanted to mention that but I want to talk about the importance of quality child care and I want to emphasize the word quality because you know Oftentimes people think child care, you know, you slap in a Disney video, <laughs> they're good for a couple of hours, you know, they learn a few songs, that's child care, that's taking care of a child. But what all the research is telling us these last few years is the building blocks for school success doesn't actually take place when they're in kindergarten or even first grade. It really takes place in the child care center. Yep. Or yep. In, the in the early ages. Yeah, that, that birth to five, that's where they build the fundamentals and, and the foundation. I'm going to let Jennifer talk about that because she's a resource specialist, and this is her <laughs> area of expertise. Uh, our resource specialists actually go out and monitor the child care centers for quality, um, and, and we offer a lot of technical assistance and trainings to the, to the child care provider teachers. So I'll let Jennifer talk. That was everything I was going to say. Uh, no. Right. <laughs> You've got more than that. <laughs> We've still got 19 minutes left. <laughs> right. Well, what more do you want to know? Yeah, it's definitely not babysitting. We don't ever want to see anyone sticking a movie in and then just having the children sitting to the side. So um, that is something that the resource specialists do. We go out and we're looking at the SR as well as the VPK programs to make sure that what they're doing is developmentally appropriate. So we want to be sure that the activities they're doing are appropriate for the children, not just because of their age, but their skill levels. So they get a lot of information from us, um, technical assistance on site, as well as the trainings, like Tony had said, um, where the teachers can come and get some more ideas for things they can be doing in their classrooms. So let me, let me ask the question maybe this way, um, is let's say I'm a new parent, mm -hmm. and I've, got, I've called 595-6363, mm -hmm. the Early Learning Coalition's Child Care Resource and Referral, and we actually did this when we moved to the community. Mm -hmm. um, and said, you know, look, I've got a, a one-year-old that needs quality child care, um, and they sent you a list, and then they also send you a list of what to look for when you go to a, a, a child care center, just so that you, not, not to, you guys don't prejudge, but it just gives parents a guide of what you're looking for in a child care site. So for our viewers and listeners, if they're interested in enrolling a child in a child care and they do some site visits, and we, you, I'm sure you strongly recommend that, right? Before yes. you sign up your child, go there and make sure it's where your child, where you want your child to go. Right. What What should a parent look for? What are What are some kind of like key indicators of quality childcare? Well, I think when a parent goes in, the first thing they just need to feel comfortable. Number one, um, you should be able to look into any of the classrooms, make sure that you can talk with the directors, talk with the teachers. Um, so there should be a level of comfort there to begin with. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that it's clean and that it's safe. So those type of things. A lot of times, um, if you're not in 
the child care field, you don't always know what it is you're looking for, so you're only seeing the appearance. So those are very important, but you want to be asking some questions too about how many children are in the classroom with the teacher and what types of things are you doing in the classroom with the teacher? You know, do they have a certain curriculum that they're using? Um, you know, do they go outside and play? You know, look in the room to see if there are a lot of things available for them to be able to use. So, I mean, those are definitely things when they first walk in that you would want to see. You know, I, I was struck, um, and I learned this from interacting with the Early Learning Coalition, and also as my child got more involved in, you know, as she got older in childcare, he and she, um, there is an actual curriculum that is used by child care sites. I mean, it's kind of, <laughs> you know, not being in the, f you know, not knowing that much about it until I got here, I never would have thought that there was a curriculum that you use for, s you know, two, three, and four-year-olds. Yes. Um, and, and a quality child care site will post a, lesson plan. a lesson plan for that week and that day. And I, I remember, like, the first time learning about that, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's like, it's like high school, I mean, it's like, <laughs> but they're so little. Um, yeah. But that's important, right? Right. Well, that's one of the best things, too. A lot of parents don't know that they have a lesson plan, and they should ask for that um, because children tend to um, give you no answers on the car ride home. You ask how their day was or what did they do, and the children say, I don't know, or they did nothing. And so now you've looked at their lesson plan, so you know what it is that they've done for the day, yeah. and then that can sort of lead some conversation for you and your child because – you would like the interaction to be happening at home, not just at school. So yeah. definitely want to look at that. And I think that, that response that sometimes you get from the kids, nothing or not much, right. I think that stays with them as they grow. They kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> they start when they're young and, and definitely <laughs> at the teenage years, it's like they got it down pat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're talking to the Early Learning Coalition, and they, they have three programs that, they're dialogu that we're dialoguing about. Um, the School Readiness Program, which is, as, as Tony mentioned, it's uh, quality child care for those families that need it for a purpose. So they have to either be working Correct. or going to school. Correct. Um, and then the VPK program, voluntary pre-K program. We gotta, uh, we're in the world of acronyms. We've got to <laughs> break that. Voluntary pre-K program. Now, you guys just had a big registration day for voluntary pre-K. Open pre -K. enrollment. Open enrollment. Are all the spots full, or can people still call and get in? <laughs> there are always <laughs> spots available. Um, a lot of the people that come the first day were coming to register for spaces in the school board, so we can't tell you. So you can't call the coalition and ask if there's any spaces in the public school because we don't know. Um, however, the child care sites, just like Tony had said, if you call the office, they can let you know a lot of the child cares, and then you can call and find out if they have any spaces available. Hmm. We have approximately, um, but we've, last few years we've served over 26 to 2,700 four-year-olds in the VPK program. And there, I believe there's traditionally been somewhere around 32 to 3,400 kindergartners that start. So we know we're still not reaching every four-year-old. But a very um, high percentage. Yeah, a very high percentage. So, um, but it is a free program. Gen it can be anywhere from a three-hour program up to a, a six-hour day, depending on the location uh, and, and <coughs> excuse me, how they run their program. Um, so those are the things that the parents need to understand as well um, when they're looking to put their child in. So if, if there are children that are still at home with, their, with one of their parents up until uh, they enter kindergarten, the VPK program is a great program to so be able to socialize your child with other children before they enter a kindergarten program. And if they get in on a three-hour day, you know, then that um, it's not a full day yet if parents are concerned about that. So, so it's kind of the beginning transition for the child. And i got to think to some degree for the parents as well. <laughs> right, yes. Because <laughs> this is the first time they're going off, maybe for some, right, some yeah. kids, um. the first time they're going off to <laughs> school. Now, you, you mentioned, because I, I know when you had the open enrollment, typically on that date you have, it's like, it's like that sales day right before Chris or before Thanksgiving. Yes, you have, Friday. yeah, <laughs> you have like a line, like that starts at a crazy hour and it's wrapped around. And those are both basically people wanting to get in at the school-based sites. Most of them. Most yeah. of them. Um, but can you talk about? Because you mentioned that you probably have, so you do have slots available at the childcare sites. Um, is there a difference besides location? Um, VPK is the same across the board statewide. 
BPK should be run exactly the same no matter where you are. So if you are south or you're north or wherever, BPK should be the same. It has the same rules, the same credentials for the teachers, everything that's required, lesson plans, curriculum, all of those things. So it should be the same everywhere. So obviously a lot of families probably want to get into a school-based site because they want their child to maybe get used to that school. But from an educational perspective, from what they're going to get out of it during that time, it's uniform across no matter what location and really what county. Correct. So, and, and I say that because, you know, if we've got some people who are maybe are listening and maybe they forgot about that date or, you know, just didn't have it on, you know, on their calendar and they're like, man, I missed out. I can't get into the school-based site. It doesn't matter. No. It's just the location. Right. Right. So we want people... You know, you mentioned 2,700, 2,600 to 2,700, but there's a little over 3,000, about 3,400 kindergartners. Um, this program can uh, grow to serve everybody, right? I mean, it's intended for everybody. So we want everybody to take advantage of it. Yes, definitely. So um, I'd like to mention as well, there was a recent news article about uh, around the VPK program and child care providers that are on probation, meaning that there is a, a school readiness rate uh, or a kindergarten readiness rate where the child is assessed within the first 30, 30 days, days. Mm -hmm. of entering kindergarten. And then that rate relates back to the child care provider that had the VPK program. Um, from last year to this year, we just received the, the rates not too long ago for last year's program. And we only have uh, 12 in St. Lucie County, uh, 12 providers that are on probation. We've seen some significant uh, improvement because the year prior we had, I think it was roughly 27 in St. Wow. Lucie County. So that's, that's a big, a big drop. Yep. So the, the article had stated there were 25 providers on probation along the Treasure Coast. So that includes Martin, Indian River, and I believe Okeechobee okay. as right. well. Um, so we didn't want people to think that there are 25 in St. Lucie County. We right. only have 12. And Jennifer, along with the other resource specialists, offer a lot of technical assistance to those providers, and they're on an improvement plan. So we are constantly monitoring them and helping them to improve. And let, let's put that in perspective for our listeners, because I don't know, I saw that article, and I don't know if it really said um, but let's talk specifically for St. Lucie County. Twelve out of how many? Uh, I believe we have, like, is it 86 locations that offer VPK? Or yeah. somewhere, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's it's a small percentage. That, yeah. And, and it's like what you said, you've identified them. I mean, you identify them yourselves, mm -hmm. and you work with them to get them better. Right. So to some degree, they're probably going to be really good <laughs> coming up because they're going to be doing everything that you said to right. make it up to standard. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I think it's important for everyone to know that those, the POPs or the, the providers on probation, those are based on the readiness rate scores, so they need to have a 70. So when people come to register their children, they're looking at the scores, and obviously they want anything that's close to 100, if not 100. But I think that's important to know that we try to explain to all of the parents is um, the score doesn't necessarily ex define the program. There are some very good programs out there that did not get a 70. So that's why it's important to go in and to look because it could be based on the population of children that they serve. Right. If they have a lot of children that are non-English speaking as a first language, if there are a lot of children with disabilities, those things are going to impact their scores. Um, also, children, if they leave and they don't go to a public school, they go to a private school and they're not doing the screenings, those are all of those children that are not going to be included into that readiness rate. So it's really important that parents know that, yes, 100 is great and we all want to get 100s but it doesn't mean that a program that got a 70 or a 60 isn't going to have just as great as a program. I, I think what you just said really speaks to what you said earlier in that the parents need to go to the site and they need to feel comfortable. Yes. And talk, you know, don't just do a, you know, a walk through and, and visually look at everything but talk to the director, mm -hmm. talk to the teachers to make sure that that's where you want your child to go. Right. That's and for VPK it's really important because you can only change once. So you want to go out and make sure that it's the school that you want because once you're in that VPK program, if something happens and you have to move for whatever the reason may be, you're only allowed to move to another VPK program one time unless you go back to the first one. So It's so important to know. So you got to do your homework. Yes. That's what I was just getting ready to say. So you need to absolutely do your homework. Yes. Go in, check not just one site but several sites. Right. Make yep. sure that it's fitting for your child. Yes. Because it might not all fit into your child's needs. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And your child is definitely the telltale sign. Exactly. They'll let you know if they're comfortable there. I'm going to pause real quick for one more station ID, really just as an excuse to give away baseball tickets. And nobody's burning up the phone lines, maybe because it's cooler out. <laughs> People are kind of thrown. Um, but I want to remind everybody you're listening to Community Connections with Children's Services Council on 1400 AM WIRA, or you're watching us with our great partner, the WLX St. Louis County School Board Channel, Channel 13 in Fort Pierce, Channel 19 in Port St. Lucie. That's for you Comcast subscribers. Channel 99 on ATTU-verse, Channel 65 on Lightstream, and Channel 19 on Hometown Cable. <laughs> I, I saw you. You were with me, Sherry. You were, like, were kind of like body language. Like, he's almost got it. Um, but thank you for listening. And we do have baseball tickets to give away. Um, and I'll be honest with you. The first caller, if you say you need 10 tickets for your family and friends, we've got 10 tickets we here do. we can give away. So the caller at 464-1400 and or for our viewers, um, you're watching us obviously on tape delay. If you're interested, go to our Facebook page. Uh, go to Facebook. Look up Children's <laughs> Services Council, St. Lucie County. Make sure you put in the St. Lucie. Um, go to our page and write on our wall that you saw the uh, TV show and you want baseball tickets and we'll get you connected. Sounds All right. good. So we're talking to Early Learning College. We've got a few more minutes. Um, I'm going to leave it up to you. you got five more minutes. Do you want to plug the Family Fun Fair, VPK, Early Learning Coalition, Father Child, or all the above? Let's, let's hit them all again. All right, all right. <laughs> Whatever we can fit in <laughs> right, in right. five minutes. All right, so let's start with the Family Fun Fair. Okay, make sure you come to the Family Fun Fair, April 5th, 11 to 2, um, Lawnwood Stadium, John B. Park in Fort Pierce off Virginia Avenue. Um, we oh, have six. Hold that, hold that. We have a call. Oh, wow. We drop everything for phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Even your plug for your event. All right. <laughs> Hello, caller. Who are we speaking to? Oh, I was trying to call the, the uh, health department. Oh, you got the wrong number. You're you're on the radio program. Sorry. Oh, sorry. All right. Oh, no. Oh, no. I should have asked her if she wanted a baseball ticket. Because <laughs> she's not going to get those from the health department. No, <laughs> I was going to joke and say it was the wrong number. <laughs> you know, one one show, we got like three calls. They were all the wrong number. Oh, no. Not good for the ego. All right, so April 5th. Yes, April 5th. Family to fun. Two. Family fun fair. It's free. Lots of activities. I-9 sports clinic, bounce houses, stage entertainment. I didn't mention Parenting Magazine. We do have an ad in there. Yep. If you want to come to that, they will have a face painter as well. Um, and they're a big supporter, annual supporter of this event, so we appreciate uh, their participation. And there's still time for any businesses out there that may want to sponsor or get involved with activities for the day. Please contact us at 595-6424 uh, and ask for Jennifer, and we can make sure that we get you hooked up for the and we're, we're breaking records this year. 700. 750 50. is the goal. 750 <laughs> is the goal. We're going to smash last year's record yeah. of 600. All right, so Family Fun Fair, everybody's got the date reserved, April 5th. Um, if this is an incentive, I'm probably guessing not, but we will be there, Children's Services Council. Yes. Ashley and I will be there, and I think, are you going to come? I will. Possibly. So you can see the whole radio crew there. <laughs> Great. <laughs> We're much more articulate in person. Um, yes. all, right, so, all right, so April 5th, Family Fun Fair, um, Early learning or the school readiness or VPK? Yeah, uh, well, school readiness again, anyone out there um, that is needing uh, the subsidy for child care or think that you may qualify that for that, please call us. We do an initial screening over the phone, anyways, so that way we can make sure that we're reserving appointments for those that we anticipate are going to qualify so we can figure that out. But just any parent at all, if you have any questions at all about child care, Give us a call. That's what we're there for. You do not have to be receiving our services to get information from us. So, And, and the number? Uh, either 595-6363 or 595-6424. And then VPK, voluntar I'm sorry, Voluntary Pre-K, yep, you have spots available. Yeah, uh, Voluntary Pre-K, I think that first week we had just over 500 children that we gave certificates to. But again, we have the capacity, there are providers out there to handle. If we got every single four-year-old, we would make sure that there uh, was a spot for them available. And that's so a free program. It's they a free need to know that that's a free program. Exactly. And so if they want to register, they need to come between 1 and 5. Yeah, come to the office between 1 <laughs> and 5, thank you, uh, Monday through Friday. But you can register all the way up until even after the program starts. So if you're aware of somebody maybe moving into town that, 
um, isn't aware of that program, maybe they're coming from out of state and they don't realize that this program's out there and they have a four-year-old, we can, we can take them uh, pretty much at any time, even after programs start. So really, listeners, if it's your child and you have children zero to four years of age, or if it's your grandchildren, or if you have a, you know, we always say this, a neighbor, congregation member, uh, co-worker that has young children, bottom line is just have them call the Early Learning Coalition at 595-6424 or 595-6363 to find out. As Tony said, you don't have to be receiving the subsidized child care to take advantage of what they have to offer because they have plenty of resources for parents for helping to find and identify quality child care for their needs. Yes. Um, and again, it starts with a phone call at 595-6424 or 595-6363. I have those numbers memorized. I've told <laughs> those many times. Um, but I want to remind everybody again, we've hit it 100 times. We're going to hit it 101 times April 5th. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Lawnwood Stadium, Family Fun Fair. Um, if you're listening to the radio and, you know, you're driving and, you know, we don't encourage you to write things down, um, we will post this information on our website as well as our Facebook page. Um, just go to uh, Facebook, look up Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. We will post the flyer on there, and we will bring this up every radio show from here until April 5th. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan? Sure does. All right. We want to thank you for coming on, being great oh, guests. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we want to thank you as well and, and the, the board of the Children's Services Council for all the funding that we receive for our programs because we are required to raise money locally to um, complete Bring our money. budget, yeah, to draw down the federal dollars. Uh, so for every dollar we're receiving from you, we're receiving 16 from the federal and state government. So thank you, Children's Services Council. Um, you're a true blessing to our community. Thank you. And, you know, what, what better investment? You put a dollar up and you get $16 back? <laughs> you can't beat no that, greater. right? Yeah. right? Yeah, no and greater. on top of that, over 2,000 children receive quality child care to give them a, a, the building block for success in school. It's really a no-brainer. Yep. Thank you for coming on. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for filling in, Wendy. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is the first time live. We got a transition <laughs> of the host. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, WLX, St. Louis County School Board, uh, Media Services, and Sharon, our producer and person that gives me the, the yes or the no when I get the call letters right. Um, and thank you, listeners and viewers, for tuning in each week. This is a weekly radio show and TV show, so guess what? We'll be back next week. Next week. Every Tuesday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., Community, community Connections with Children's Services Council. And remember, this is our children, our community, and our future. We'll see you next week.